This webisode of Waterways is brought to you by Yamaha. Yamaha revs your heart. Boat Blurb, inspired boating content. Become a subscriber today. And St. Clair Boat Sales, turning boaters' dreams into reality. Welcome to Waterways. This week we are transiting the Welland Canal. This is one of the ultimate boating bucket list items for a lot of people I know. But first, you have to get here. And as I mentioned in episode one, I keep my boat in Toronto. So step one is a crossing due south to St. Catharines. Virtually everyone has a phone these days, so when talking about boating safety, of course, there's an app for that. It's Canadian, it's free, and I am not selling it. If I was, perhaps my name wouldn't be in the end credits so many times. Anyways, it's called Weather to Boat and has a few great safety features. For example, it'll allow you to set a trip plan. It'll have emergency contacts. Um, you know, if you're on a smaller lake and you're not going out that far, you probably don't need to worry about a trip plan and the auto set of a contact. But if you're out like I am in the middle of a great lake, miles away from shore in any direction, it's probably not a bad idea at all to set that up. You can turn it off when you get back. It automatically notifies someone if you don't turn it off or don't check in. It says, I was planning to go from A to B, planning to arrive around that time. If you don't arrive at that time or don't turn it off, it notifies someone for you. They'll probably call you and say, hey, your app, no worries. Look, it's highly unlikely you're ever gonna need to make use of that feature but no one sets out planning to have an accident. And even a one in a million chance is still a chance. And this is a gorgeous day, but this is some serious water worthy of your utmost respect at all times. No catch, it is funded by the government through the Canadian Safe Boating Council. You're not gonna be dinged with subscription fees. The whole point is to keep us all safe on the water. I will see you out there safely. As for this particular crossing, it was one of those truly magic days on the water. Ahead of your transit, make sure you check the website for the latest information and timing and check in on time because this is not a show up when you want kind of thing. Once you get the all clear from the Seaway staff, you enter slowly past the massive gates into the cavernous locks. There are eight locks in total, but the seven major ones are concentrated in the first six and a half nautical mile northern stretch of the Welland Canal. The Seaway provides the lines and you need to keep pulling in, so you don't tie off here, you just loop it around a cleat and keep pulling it in. And be sure to keep the line out of the water and away from your props. 
the first seven locks have an average lift of around 14 meters or 46 feet. And because they're concentrated towards the Lake Ontario side, your upbound journey starts with a lot of excitement. All right, as we're passing under the bridge, welcome back, son. Good time to go over a couple of the basic rules. So once you get underway, there is speed limits throughout the whole thing. You're not going on plane. This is a full day activity. You're not rushing through, but that's all right. I will admit that part of it is exceedingly boring, but the locks are super cool and it's way better and way cheaper than trucking to the other side. Watch for the lights. They got red and green lights at the lift bridges, the draw bridges, and the locks. Don't enter or go under until it's green. In this case, we are the fifth of five boats going through, so we just wait till they're in and we slide in behind them. Also sunscreen. It can be hot. Nice camera work, Wilson. You're gonna get in the end credits for this one. All right, door closed. Up we go. All right, between locks two and three, I feel as though it now is a good time to go over a couple of basic ground rules of the well and some tips I've learned. Number one, you've got to book this in advance and pay in advance. You can't just show up like you can on, say, the Trent Severn waterway. Number two, unlike the Trent Severn, where you can just do a lock, turn around, spend the day, get off, wander around, that's not the case here. There's fences, there's barbed wire on the fence right there. You go through this and that's it. There's no stopping, there's no turning around and changing your mind. And you're kind of at the mercy of the big freighters in the seaway overall and how long it takes. I've done this three times now, twice upbound, once downbound, and it averages about seven hours, though you do hear horror stories where some people have been in here for 24. So make sure you've got enough food and drink and fuel and supplies for at least 24 hours. You very unlikely will need it. You also see on my hands gloves. That's another tip. The lines they throw down a little bit rough, a little bit wet, dirty. Gloves give you a little more traction and grip and easier. And a tip that was given to me by someone else before my very first transit was when they drop the lines down, loop it around on the opposite side of your boat. Gives you a little better angle of attack to hold you into the wall. Also upbound, you need a minimum of three adults on board. One to do the bow line, one for the stern line, and one to stay at the controls because you are constantly working the throttles and shifters uh, if you've got to because when they start filling it up that water's churning around like crazy and you get pushed around so it's less physically demanding to be the captain going upbound on the Welland but there is a lot more pressure let's say but we got Gramps behind the wheel he's doing a great job my wife's at the bow and I'm bringing up the rear as usual and here in lock three you've got the big viewing platform as well. So don't be nervous, but there are gonna be people watching because they just wanna see the Welland. They're not judging how you're handling. They're not judging any movements, nothing like that. It's just somewhere for people on land to come check this stuff. Luckily, it's not the first one. So you kinda got the system down. Arguably, nothing is more exciting than the flight locks. Number four, five, and six are back to back to back, which means the doors are twice as high and you have to inch your way all the way up to the front. And if there's lots of pleasure craft, you'll likely have to raft off each other. But man, check out this view. So you gotta listen to the Seaway staff and we've changed the order here. So these trawlers behind us, we were actually behind the first three locks, but coming into the flight locks, they said it gets crazy turbulent and it would be insane to be back there. So we're wrapped it up with two of our new sailing boat buddies here. And we've got three of these to go. It's calmed down a little bit now. I'll try and get some video of it to show you how wild it was. It was full on release the Kraken. Video never really does justice for this sort of thing. 
You're not going to get tossed around if you hang onto the lines, but the captain has to stay aware and stay at the controls because there will be some correcting you'll likely need to do. Lock 4 opens directly into Lock 5, and you get to do it all over again. So I don't know if you can hear me on this one because we're right up by the lock and the water's rushing. A question you might have is, well, what if I don't know what to do or I don't have enough people? You can hire a captain to bring you through here. Much like the big freighters have a pilot, you can have someone like my friend Bob. He's Hi. helping He's helping the sailboat through and he's brought through freighters. He can handle your boat. I don't care what it is. So there's a way to get through here. Don't be intimidated by the Welland. You can bring your boat through, and it's an absolutely amazing experience. Now we are in the 13.4 kilometer long Welland Bypass, which was made in the late 60s, opened in 1973. Great for shipping, wildly boring for recreational boaters, but that's all right. Boring means uneventful, and uneventful in tight waterways shared with freighters is actually a good thing. So while we're cruising along here slowly for a little while, let's take a look at the OPP Marine Unit. If you want to talk about the history, you want to try and see the history. And I'm not talking about you, Eric. I'm talking about the boats. But for <laughs> someone that does know the history, Eric Hatfield, thank you, sir. Appreciate you taking your time. No, no problem. So you know a lot about the whole marine unit and everything. This is the first, one of the first boats? One of the first two. Uh, the OPP purchased uh, back in the time when uh, the OPP didn't have a mandate to look after the waterways policing. They had uh, an island up in Kenora and one in Tomogamy. So they've had to buy two boats in order to get uh, uniform officers to and from the mainland. So that's how it started, just it was like commuting, commuting. to the islands. The last wooden boat was taken on a service boat, I'm gonna say in 1989, somewhere in there. Really? Yeah. It was active service until it, it the 80s? It was active service in Sombra, Ontario, uh, the John W. Murray. And it was, uh, uh, it was named after the first uh, OPP detective. And the boat that we're standing in front of is not just a recreation or a replica. This is, this is legit. This, this is was legit. this is original. Yes. Uh, some real neat characteristics with that old boat. Um, one that people wouldn't see today, and that's uh, crank up windows, just like your car. Uh, the uh, gas pedal on the floor uh, was a little different, but the engine was made uh, by Chrysler. Um, Chrysler made a lot of marine engines as well as for cars and stuff. Yeah. So that's what it was powered with to uh, basically decipher whether it was our boat or not. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, the number system, or there was no such thing as decals on the boat, they used uh, letters that were screwed in <laughs> to the side of the boat. Right. So I was able to get up in the, underneath the hull here, and on the inside, I could actually see where all the, the numbers, where letters were screwed, because they came <laughs> right, right through the boat. That's a pretty so, clear authentication. Pretty much technique. knew at that point, yeah, this was, was the OPP boat. Sergeant Dave Moffat, how are you, buddy? How are you, buddy? Nice to meet you. So the history, that that the Tomogamy, the wooden, beautiful boat that started as the commuter to get to an island right. has evolved to what? What are you talking about now? How many officers, how many boats? Well, we have approximately 370 officers, 360, 370, and we have 170 boats. Wow. So it's it's so cool to see where it started from to where it is now. And the uh, it's just advanced so greatly. Yeah, so Lake Ontario is covered by many jurisdictions in Toronto, Peel, Halden, Hamilton, Niagara. Um, and we basically do the rest, right? So right from, there's a point where Durham also is there. When, when Durham ends, that's where we start up the St. Lawrence and everything else in the province, like Lake Superior, Lake Huron, Lake Erie. And the variety of waters, like, you know, the Trent Severn to yeah. Lake Superior, very different. But your officers are all trained the same, is that right? Yeah, so we, uh, we do a two-week uh, course, and the two-week course is very intense, a lot of operation. We, see we have about 38 hours of on-water uh, practice on our vessels. And we train them up to, you know, if, if 
someone's up in Muskoka, they really don't need a, uh, a huge license because of the distance they'll be from shore. Um, but we train them the same way as if they were going to be called down to Lake Superior and do a call down there. So it's really important that everyone in the province can go anywhere in the province to do some marine policing. How do you become a marine unit officer? Do you have to have a background in boating? So actually, we prefer if, if people don't have a background in boating. Really? Yep. We have, uh, we'll have a handful of officers that have never stepped in a boat before. And by the end of this two-week course, we have guys that have 30 years experience in a recreational vessel and a person that doesn't have any experience on day one. And then at day 10, which is two weeks, five days each, day 10, they're all the same. It's an amazing thing to watch. And the confidence level that every one of the officers has by the end of the course is, is pretty spectacular. All right, Sergeant Moffitt, wonderful day on the water, my friend. It's been a pleasure, Steve. Thank you for coming. Pleasure's been all mine. But I will admit, as much as I don't want to say take me back to the dock, that you probably have a better thing to do than cruise me around all day. So we can call it a day. I, I won't make you say it. <laughs> I won't make you say it. You know, you're welcome anytime. All right. Goose, take me home or lose me forever. Here, here we go. <laughs>So season one of Waterways, I'm going all over Ontario and I am here at, well, kind of the end of it in, in a sense, because we are on the St. Clair River, Ontario on one side, Michigan on the other, just behind the camera right now is that little dotted line on the map, that's the international border. And my friend, John Patterson, thanks for bringing me out here. What's going on? Living the dream. <laughs> You're a yacht broker, you've been selling brokes for a couple years. Correct. I know that. You, you do some cross-border deals. So Absolutely. I've been asked questions by viewers and friends and family, and I have no idea. For someone watching at home that finds a listing that they, it's their perfect boat, they can bring it across, right? Absolutely. Uh, what are sort of the key things they need to know to be able to make that happen? Uh, the first thing is do a live video tour of the boat, and you want to go around, make sure the upholstery is in great condition, the canvas, kind of a a preliminary type showing. You want to go through it as well as the engine compartment. And if everything checks out, I'd schedule a time to go down there and look at it. Uh, go down and look at it. If the boat is great, put it under contract. Um, you want to deal with some reputable surveyors. And you can do that contract on condition of the survey, right? Correct. So you're not going to lose it while the survey is happening. Correct. Correct. You're saying I'll buy it if it checks out. Yeah, correct. You also want to obtain as many service records as possible. Once that all, all checks out and the boat's great, you go for your water test. Then from there, what you do is you arrange a, cus a custom broker to handle all the paperwork of importing the boat into Canada. Another thing, you want to make sure that there is no loan on the boat. Typically in America, I love America, one of the greatest countries in the world, the issue is a lot of them have loans on boats, which is fine. You just want to make sure that you have a statement of payout so you can pay out the loan. Once that is paid off, it's uh, import the boat, you're good to go. That sounds there like that was a lesson learned the hard way at some point. I'm not going to dig yeah. deep, but <laughs> no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine that's something they This is why you go with the, the professionals. So like there are brokers that will help you bring the boat across and make sure yeah. your duties and taxes are all in line, right? Yeah. Because this is a significant purchase. Yes. It's not a big deal if everything's papered properly, but you want to make sure because that would ruin your summer. You Correct. get it across to your slip, your home, Correct. only to find out, whoops, <laughs> it's not, it's going back. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. It does seem like a, like, a, like a huge undertaking, as long as you have the right processes and the right people, it's all about the uh, people and know what to look for. You know, it's not, it's not a daunting task and uh, it can be actually quite, quite fun, so. Closing in on 10 hours and we are almost through our transit of the Welland. Lock 8 is just ahead of us and then it's a short little hop to Sugarloaf Marina. And we've been waiting here for a little while. Why? That's why. <laughs> that is a gigantic, slow moving freighter. Not a lot of daylight between its ship's walls and the lock walls. Uh, and it is beyond cool to be this close to them. You don't get this opportunity in very many places. The eighth and final lock is a little different. You don't tie up as it's a short lift, a final regulation of the Lake Erie level of the day, so you idle in the middle. And then 
You have one last lift bridge and you are clear on the Lake Erie side of the Welland Canal. This was my fourth trip through and the longest by a few hours. From start to finish, it was about 11 hours in total, but a definite adventure. Next week, we're gonna check out this town, Port Colborne. One of the best kept boating secrets in all of Ontario. The downbound journey was roughly the same time dock to dock, but three and a half hours of that was sat waiting at the start for the all clear. It's not something I'd want to do every single day, but something I love doing and love sharing with my family. The steel tube cartridge inside is gonna blow up and it will turn into like a uh, life jacket. So it'll actually keep your head above water. Very tight, very good. I love okay. it. So how's this? This fit? This it's good, a little, right? little loose, right? Well, I think mm -hmm. there was a more stealth guy on board before that was wearing uh, the... Uh... So I'll just tighten it up for oh, you. Hang on, oh. I know, I've met you guys yeah. before. There's nothing sharp in my pocket. <laughs> I don't know, I don't think I'll get my handcuffs out <laughs> this time, okay? Customs are paid. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Five. High five. Look at that. <laughs> Man, there we go. Let's make a graphic out of that. <laughs> Call the art department. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Step one. We need an art department. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the summer, the summer, the summer of you.